Hi, I'm Bill Myers, and this is another one of my video tips of the week. In this week's video tip, I'm going to show you how I work with Camtasia Studio to edit the videos that I record with the Camtasia Screen Capture program. I'm also going to show you a couple of tricks that I use to get better results. What you're seeing on the screen here is a Camtasia editor. Up here is the screen that I recorded. Over here is the input file. Down here are the video and audio tracks. Now, when I record these, the first thing I usually do is I make sure that I have three or four seconds of silence before I start speaking. So here's the silence, and this is where I speak. In that silence area, I pull this over until I have about a second and a half of silence. And then I click Audio. And in the Audio, I click Advanced. And then I choose Manual Noise Training on Selection. And what that does is that's going to remove any hiss that may be in that silence area. So I click that, and it removes any noise in that area. And then I go ahead and cut out that part of silence because I want to start my video immediately when I start talking. So I click that, and it cuts it out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to use this slider right here to expand my timeline. The reason I do that is it makes it easy to edit just the pieces of the video that I'm going to work with. And also I usually just raise this track up here so I can see my audio. Now if you look through here you can see my audio looks pretty good. I can tell right here that there's a gap between where I'm talking and where I start up and that's going to be a breathing sound. So while I'm in audio what I can do is I can move my pointers across like this to that gap and just pull down the audio on that gap. So now there's no breathing sound. Now I'll do that throughout the video. So there'll be a several of these. About every eight seconds there'll be a breathing sound and I'll just do that. And that cleans up the audio. It really makes the audio sound a lot better when you don't hear heavy breathing when it plays back. Now some of the other things that I do in Camtasia is that when I start the video, this is the start down here and you can see what it looks here. I like to zoom in. To do that, I click the zoom tab and then on the window I just resize this window here on the left side and it shows me what my zoom is going to look like on the over here in the preview window. So when I play this video, it's going to start zoomed in and it'll play through. Now something I use in all, on most of my videos are going to be callouts. And this is a callout over here. And there are a number of different callouts that you can use. This is one that I use a lot. And this is this drawing box. And the way the drawing box is, you click the callout. It shows up on the screen here. I'll just move over it. And then you can put that callout wherever you want put it in position where you want and you can also change the border size. I like a little bit wider border like that. Now when that call out starts it's going to look like a hand drawn call out because I have the draw time set to be a second. So if I click play you can see it's drawing itself. It looks like it's being hand drawn on the screen. Now another type of call out that I use in my videos is the blur and you find that down here in the call out list. There's the blur right there. You click on it. It puts it on the screen and you move the blur over whatever you want to hide. In this case I'm going to hide the word screencast. And when I do blurs I usually don't have a fade in or fade out because I want to precisely control where the blur starts. Now one of the things you may want to do when you have a blur on the screen is also zoom. And if you zoom the blur won't follow the zoom but there's a way to fix that. And the way to do that is to go into the blur a few seconds and do your zoom there. And we're going to do that here. I'm going to hold down the control key so I have both timelines chosen. I'm going to choose zoom and pan. I'm going to go ahead and zoom my window over here. And when you do a zoom, it's just going to do an immediate jump. But what I want to do is I want to do a, about a 18 or 19 frame zoom. So I just pull this little arrow out right there. And to have the blur follow the zoom, I do the same thing above. I do about an 18 frame zoom. There we go. Now if I play this and you watch the zoom right there, you watch the blur area right there, you'll notice that the blur keeps up with the zoom. So right there, blurred with a zoom. It's a really nice feature, especially if you're doing a zoom in when you have something on the screen blurred, or if you have any other callouts, it works the same way. Now, one of the other things that I use sometimes in my videos is to extend a frame. For example, I may have a frame where I want to do voice narration over something that's shown on the screen, but I don't have enough room to do the narration. To do that, I would go select a frame where I want to extend the timeline and go up to Edit. And in Edit, I'm going to choose Extend Frame. And then down here, it tells me how many seconds I can extend the frame. If I want to put in 8 seconds of narration, I just choose 8 and then OK. And on my timeline, it's going to extend that frame by 8 seconds. You see, I have 8 blank seconds there. And the video that's there is going to remain, and I can record audio to put a narration up. So it's a really neat trick. And now I'm going to show you one other trick that I do. Sometimes when I have two scenes on the screen, and I want to do a transition between the two scenes, I don't want to just do a jump cut from one to the other. I want to do some type of interesting transition. And the way that I do that is I put my mouse on the timeline where I want to do the transition. I go up to edit. 
uh, come down to split all and it splits the production right there. Now the reason you want to do a split all is because you can only do a transition between split elements. Now that that's done, I go over my transition, I like cube rotate and bring that up and you can see that when I play through that it's going to do a cube rotate. And the final thing that I do on all my videos is to bring up my name and website and the way I do that is I go to file import media choose the graphic that has my website on it click open pull that down on the timeline once it's on the timeline I resize it on the screen to where I want it and then always do a transition on that as well so I go to transitions cube rotate and put it on top of that so when you see my videos in you'll they'll end with something that looks like this let's see that come up on the screen so anyway, those are the tricks that I use when I do Camtasia Studio. I thought you might find them interesting. I'm Bill Myers. This has been another one of my video tips of the week. You can find more like this at www.bmyers.com.